Was Jane Mansfield really a Satanist? And was her untimely death really an accident? Or was her untimely death because of a satanic curse? You're about to find out. I'm Sarah, and welcome to Conspiracy Central. So, you probably know her for this picture with Sophia Loren. Yeah, Jane's getting judged like crazy by Sophia. I mean, this picture is iconic. It's all over the internet. And the outfits? Come on. Let's start with who is Jane Mansfield? Jane Mansfield was born Vera Jane Palmer on April 19th, 1933. She grew up to become a very well-known actress, singer, nightclub entertainer, and playboy playmate. Some of her most well-known work as an actress includes playing the role of Rita Marlowe in the Broadway play, Will Success Spoil Rock Hunter? You know, the one which later became a feature film. And she was also in The Girl Can't Help It in 1956, the drama The Wayward Bus in 1957, and the neo-noir Too Hot to Handle in 1960. And also maybe her most well-known role was probably a flop, Promises Promises from 1963. In this film, she actually did a nude scene, which made her one of the first female actresses ever to do so. You go, Jane. Love that for you. Jane had been married three times, with each leading to a divorce. She's said to have some love affairs with some very, very well-known men, such as Robert and John F. Kennedy, her attorney, Samuel S. Brody, and the Las Vegas entertainer, Nelson Sardelli. Ooh, the list goes on and on. She was a hot commodity and uh, was boy crazy, for sure. She had a bunch of marriages and even more boyfriends, almost all of them happening simultaneously. Unfortunately, on June 29th, 1967, she died in a car crash in New Orleans at the young age of 34. All right, so where does the Satanist stuff come into play? Right here, with her connection to Anton LaVey and the Church of Satan. Well, who is Anton LaVey? He was an author, musician, and Satanist. He wrote many books on this religion, including the Satanic Bible, the Satanic Rituals, The Satanic Witch, The Devil's Notebook, and Satan Speaks. Ugh, I love book club. He was the founder of the Church of Satan and the religion of Satanism. He was the high priest of the Church of Satan. And I went to the Church of Satan website just to get an idea of what goes on there. And this is the description that I found on the homepage. Founded on April 30th, 1966 by Anton LaVey, we are the first above ground organization in history openly dedicated to the acceptance of man's true nature, that of a carnal beast, living in a cosmos that is indifferent to our existence. To us, Satan is the symbol that best suits the nature of who we are, carnal by birth. People who feel no battles raging between our thoughts and feelings, we who do not embrace the concept of a soul imprisoned in a body. He represents pride, liberty, and individualism, qualities often defined as evil by those who worship external deities, who feel there is a war between their minds and emotions. So that's just a little glimpse into the Church of Satan. The high priest Anton LaVey did a lot of sketchy shit. He spent his Friday nights presenting lectures on the occult and rituals, a lot of the time during his rituals and occults, he would have scantily clad women laying around the altars while he was presenting. Anton LaVey was also very well known for being a ladies' man, a Hugh Hefner type, if you will. And he loved being the center of attention and being in the spotlight. <laughs> that makes two of us. All eyes on him, just like Jane Mansfield. So it was really a match made in heaven, or a match made in hell, in this case. So what does it mean to be a Satanist? Well, here are the nine satanic statements in the religion. Number one, Satan represents indulgence instead of abstinence. Number two, Satan represents vital existence instead of spiritual pipe dreams. Three, Satan represents undefiled wisdom instead of hypocritical self-deceit. Four, Satan represents kindness to those who deserve it instead of love wasted on ingrates. Five, Satan represents vengeance instead of turning the other cheek. Number six, Satan represents responsibility to the responsible instead of concern for psychic vampires. Seven, Satan represents man as just another animal, sometimes better, more often worse than those who walk on all fours, who, because of his divine spiritual and intellectual development, has become the most vicious animal of all. Eight, Satan represents all of the so-called sins as they all lead to physical, mental, or emotional gratification. 
and nine, Satan has been the best friend the church has ever had. He's kept it in business all these years. They do got a point with that one. I mean, Jane Mansfield definitely was down with number one, indulgence instead of abstinence, because she was married and had a bunch of affairs. So I don't really know if there's some sort of connections there, but anyway, back to the story. Mansfield met Anton LaVey at a 1966 film festival where they hit it off. After their initial meeting, they were seen together out in public a lot and photographed together. Apparently, LaVey invited Mansfield back to his home at one point and performed a satanic ritual with Mansfield present and in attendance. Just cute little date things, you know? Mansfield herself denied being a Satanist, but the public has some different opinions on the topic. Even though she denied it, she publicly declared that LaVey was a genius, and LaVey was best known for being a Satanist. Any other person would be afraid of this guy. They'd probably just call him scary, not a genius. So maybe she was or wasn't a Satanist, but she was down with the Satanists. This was a full-blown love affair between Anton LaVey and Jane Mansfield. It's said that Mansfield originally sought out this relationship with LaVey because of his abilities to perform curses on people and that he had some supernatural powers. And Mansfield wanted some supernatural help to further her career and stardom. And people speculated that this was a sure way to keep her name in the papers and Hollywood buzzing about her and her relationship with the extreme Anton LaVey. And Mansfield has said that she is not a Satanist and deny that she had a sexual relationship or intimate relationship with Anton. But that wasn't true according to Anton. And when Mansfield started dating her already married lawyer, Samuel S. Brody, LaVey hated him and hated the situation. They had a few choice words with each other and uh, in a few different encounters, let's say. LaVey took it to the extreme, putting a curse on Samuel S. Brody. The curse stated that he would die within a year, and supposedly the curse somehow protected Mansfield. He didn't put a bad curse on Mansfield, just Samuel Brody, and it was supposed to protect Mansfield from Brody. LaVey claimed that Brody was aggressive and abusive towards Mansfield, but after the curse, bad things started to happen to both Brody and Mansfield. Mansfield's son Sultan got mauled by a lion. In Japan, some of Mansfield's jewelry was stolen. Mansfield's show was canceled in London after being accused of not paying her hotel bill. Mansfield was robbed while visiting Las Vegas. She was attacked in Brazil by a mob of fans who got physical and ripped off her clothing. Then she was in not one, but two car accidents with her boyfriend, Samuel Brody. So obviously this curse was not protecting her at all. She was definitely cursed too. Then it came down to June 22nd, 1967. Samuel Brody was in the car driving to pick up Mansfield from lunch when he was hit by another car. He had to go to the hospital for a broken leg and a few cracked ribs. Then it was her final nightclub tour. This was less than a year since the curse was put into place. So it was only one week later, June 29th, 1967. Samuel Brody, Jane Mansfield, three of her kids, and their driver, Ronnie Harrison, were on their way from Mississippi to New Orleans when suddenly they slammed into the back of a semi-tractor trailer at a whopping 80 miles an hour. Unfortunately, Jane, Brody, and Ronnie Harrison died immediately upon impact. But luckily, the three children sleeping in the back survived with minimal injuries. But just like Anton said, Samuel Brody died within a year. And unfortunately, two other people died in the accident as well. Looking further into the Church of Satan and Anton LaVey's views, it seems that he didn't actually believe in God or Satan. So I'm not sure about a satanic curse and if it'll work, but if you don't believe in Satan, I don't know, somehow he figured it out. Okay, so that's the Satanist part. But through my research, I also found another interesting point of view surrounding the mystery of her death. It has to do with Marilyn Monroe and John F. Kennedy. So backing it up for a minute, Jane Mansfield always wanted to be a big Hollywood star since she was a little girl. Her childhood hero was Shirley Temple. And her lust for stardom started at a very young age, taking acting and singing lessons and playing the violin. She would stand out in the driveway and play the violin for anyone who would listen, a showman at a very young age. Well, Jane grew up and married her sweetheart, actually before finishing high school. She went off to college and studied acting and singing. She eventually convinced her husband at the time to move the family out to California 
to pursue acting for real. And then she started as a nightclub entertainer. And then she was given her first big break in Playboy. Jane is a blonde bombshell. I mean, just look at her. She was often compared to Marilyn Monroe. Jane sort of copied Marilyn on a lot of things. And yes, blonde hair and all. Mansfield had a contract with 20th Century Fox for acting, and even they were using her and grooming her to become their own version of Marilyn Monroe. And after the Broadway hit, Will Success Spoil Rock Hunter? In 1955, Mansfield received a Golden Globe Award for Most Promising Newcomer, so things were looking good. And being like Marilyn was paying off, or so she thought. And while Mansfield was enamored with Monroe, the feelings were not reciprocated. Monroe always felt like she was ripping her off. She even wanted to take legal action against her for basically stealing her look and personality, but she never went forward with anything official or legal. Jane was very smart, and with an IQ of 163, she created an image for herself of being a dumb blonde. That's what the audience wanted, and that's what the audience liked. Jane knew that and played it to her advantage. She modeled much of her look and career after Marilyn Monroe, and we all know about Marilyn Monroe and John F. Kennedy and Robert Kennedy and the affair, right? Happy birthday, Mr. President. And there's a conspiracy surrounding her death. It's believed that her ties to the Kennedy family may have something to do with it. If you don't know, be sure to watch our other videos on that topic. On August 5th, 1962, Marilyn was found dead in her bedroom just hours after having an argument with her supposed lover, Robert F. Kennedy. Well, Jane once again followed in Marilyn's footsteps and started a relationship with John F. Kennedy and Robert Kennedy. So that leads us to the question, did her relationship to the Kennedy family have anything to do with her sudden death? I mean, if the Kennedy family killed Marilyn Monroe, why wouldn't they kill poor man's version of Marilyn, Jane Mansfield? Mansfield even brought up this question herself and made the comment in comparison, maybe I'll be next, she said jokingly. But that kind of just gave me chills. So throughout Mansfield's three marriages, she had five children. Their names are Jane Marie Mansfield, of course, she named one after herself, Sultan Hargitay, Mickey Hargitay Jr., and Tony Simber. And one of those children is none other than Mariska Hargitay from Law & Order SVU, Olivia Mother Fucking Benson. So were Jane Mansfield's children Satanist? Is Mariska Hargitay a Satanist? Well, no, she's not. She was only three years old when her mom died, and she's made a few comments on the incident. In a 2021 interview, she said, I think I learned about crisis very young, and I learned very young that shit happens, and there's no guarantees, and we keep going, and then we transform it. That's been kind of my superpower, and the gift of having trauma early in life. I spent the last 50, how old am I? 57? So, 54 years sort of trying to figure out what happened and why, and what am I supposed to do with it? She also says she believes in God and that there are no such thing as accidents. Everything happens for a reason and God has a plan. So I guess she sees her mom's early death as no accident either. It was destiny and an unfortunate fate. So what do you think? Was Jane Mansfield a Satanist? Do you think her death is related to being cursed by Anton LaVey in the Church of Satan? Or do you think that the Kennedy family might have something to do with her mysterious death? Let me know in the comments. I'm Sarah, and this is Conspiracy Central. Bye.